so could you see the screenshot? Yes, yeah, I can. Hello. Yeah, okay. So yeah, as you as you said, I think that there is uh yeah, just uh, two of us in the study club for today. So I think that let me type the start. Then mm -hmm. we can start, okay? Sure. All right. Okay. So hello everyone. So today, today we're gonna we're gonna do with I'm gonna read the chapter eight for the special oral correlation because uh this is a just kind of a long time kind of a summer summer time adjustment and then we just uh came back from the that long vacation and then now we just uh, resumed our study class. Okay, so chapter eight actually talk about the how because we already already studies about the what kind of a clustering or dispersion pattern like visually, because we just intuitively kind of a figure out the okay this is a kind of a clustering pattern or dispersed pattern kind of thing, but the problem is how we can try to quantify those kind of a. I would say about the degree of the clustering or degree of the dispersion in the in the in the across the space. That is uh, another question we can uh we can think about. So in that case, we have to uh in this chapter actually introduce the two concepts, which is the one is the Morenz index and then uh, the other one is a Geary's uh Geary's C kind of a code. Uh, indexing kind of score, but uh, and also actually in here, chapter eight actually introduced the two two concepts. But the thing is that there is also another concept called get his old G statistic kind of thing, because that one is also one of the on uh one of the index score that we can use to uh to represent to represent the extent. Of the clustering or dispersion. So, so at the top, you can see that, okay, now we're gonna think about how we can describe, especially for the how we can quantify the extent which a variable is the correlated with itself across the space. So, so that means maybe there is a some some space in here, like uh, some area has a uh, some bed some uh maybe some value like a 10 maybe there is a, another there is a, it, its neighbor next to the that a, uh, area a and then it says about the a or maybe maybe c gonna be maybe five or maybe d is in here and then this one is maybe two maybe etc so this kind of a, when we have a, this kind of a uh, area with uh, this value, maybe we can also wondering about the how those values is the correlated to together when they are close to together. Because uh, this one is actually based on the what is called Pablo's first law of geography, which means everything is related to everything else, and then the near thing is more related to the distance thing. So that means. If if the if the they are close to together, value tends to be also very similar, uh similar to one uh similar to each other or one another. So that's the very first there that's the top first law of the geography. So we can think about the when it comes to about the special correlation, we can think about the two part, like a positive correlation occurs that observations with a similar value are closer together. So that means in in this example, like a, uh, area A and area B, area A has the ten, uh, value of 10, and then area, area B holds the, or have a value of eight. And then they are they are just kind of adjacent, adjacent to each other. In that case, we can say that these are the very positively correlated, okay? Or, and then when we say about the negative correlated means, maybe if when we thinking about the area B and area D, even if they are actually very close to each other, but 
their value is uh, quite different, right? Compared to the A and B. In that case, we can say about the negatively, uh, slightly negatively kind of correlated to one another because uh, these kind of things is actually more like a standardized kind of a relative, relative score to re re represent the extent of the value gonna be correlated to one another across the space, okay? So as you can see here in the example, like a figure 8.1, you can say that when we have a positive, highly positive correlation, that means black one actually uh, clustering, uh, just a black one is uh, just kind of a close, close together with the only black one, white one is only have a white one, like a highly clustered. And then when we have a highly, extremely ne negative, that means every black one has the white neighbors, right? In this case, that is the kind of a example of the highly, extremely negative correlations, okay? And then uh, in the middle is the kind of a no special correlation, like uh, there is a no, correlated or clustering or dispersion pattern we can define based on the these kind of a, a value distributions across the space. So as you can see here, so when we think about the special correlation, we have we can use the two index score in here, this chapter, which is the Moran's index. And then uh, the other one is the gear is a C coefficient. So in here, we actually use the that housing, the median house that housing prices data set that we can use here. So these are the kind of a data set, right? And then, and then we can just kind of a read the that uh that census tract level post housing Boston housing database in here. And then we can actually visualize that one as an interactive mapping as a, or a web view, like uh, like this, right? When you're looking at that, the bottom here, you can see that there is a pattern of the uh, median housing prices value distributed within the that um, Boston, uh, Boston greater area, metropolitan area boundary. So when you say about the these kind of uh, five to fifty is actually some of the I personally think that this one is uh, just kind of a thousand kind of a dollar value like uh, fifty is the fifty thousand dollar and then a five is a five thousand dollar I guess so it is quite old data set I guess because that housing price is uh, such a cheap in here uh in this in this case but anyway so. As you can see here, when you're thinking about the, the this kind of a pattern, you can easily visually find out that it is a somewhat kind of a clustering with the with the lower price, uh, lower housing prices and the higher prices, right? In here, when you're looking at the this area, you can see that like the so Wave End and Western and Lincoln area, you can see that most of the high highest housing prices area tends to be clustering together. And then when you're looking at the Boston downtown area, lowest housing prices neighborhood tends to be clustered together, right? So there is a some some somewhat kind of a clustering or some some areas of some dispersed pattern. So how we can quantify and how we can measure this, that is the question, right? So, Let's talk about the, what is called the global global Morans index. So global Morans index is a kind of like a, uh we already have a all the data set as a population data set and then we just try to uh try to measuring the measuring the cluster uh clustering or special uh, <clears throat> the degree of the or special or correlation of the one area compare compared to the rest, rest of the area, okay? The, the rest of the area in the, in the population in our data set. So these, 
this one is uh, just kind of a very simple kind of a equation. So what what the what the denominator says is uh, this wij is the what is called the geographically weighted in uh matrices, um multiplied by yi minus y hat. So y hat is kind of like a mean value for the all of the area, and then y i is the that the value of the that specific neighbor uh, specific area i, and then uh, this one actually thinking about the kind of a kind of a re, uh uh residual or or just kind of a deviation from the mean. And also at the top, this one is actually thinking actually about the what is called the covariation, uh, covari uh, covariance kind of a calculation at the top. Okay, this one, and then uh at the top is uh, just kind of a uh, relationship like a covariance between uh area. I and J, okay. In the middle, in the in the denominator one is uh, just kind of a uh variance between area I and and the rest of areas. Because the rest of the area, the value of the rest of the area other than the area i is represented as a mean value. And then uh, at the top one, like a numer uh, uh, numerator, <laughs> that is actually covariance between the area i and j. Because the uh, Morenz index is uh, just kind of a degree of the correlations between the between the some specific area i and j. Okay. So that means there is a area I and there is an area J. And then we can actually measure about the degree of the neighbor, or degree of the proximity, I would say. Degree of the proximity as a measure of the weighted matrix W. And then we can actually calculate about the covariance and then uh, overall kind of variances. And then uh, that is, uh, uh, that is kind of a relative value and then a standardized value of the i. That's the, how it comes from. And then, uh, we can actually testing about the, these kind of operations using the Morenz index and then upon find the how similar region is the neighbor and then average all of these assessments. So, so, and then I, I actually, did not understand what exactly what this one exactly means. But the thing is basically when we looking at the, these very first equations, but what Morenz index does is Morenz index gonna be have a value between the negative one to one, okay, and zero. So actually when the Morenz index value is closer to one, that means extremely positively correlated. That means similar value is uh, just kind of a clustering together. Negative negative one means uh, extremely negative special correlation, which means each neighbor has the different uh, different values to one another. Zero is a kind of like a no special correlation represents. Okay. So that's the kind of thing. And then we can, so that's the, uh, that's the basic things of the uh, global Morenz index. And then in R, we can actually use the just kind of a simple line of code, which is the Morenz test function in the, in the SDDP packages to, uh, to creating the, what is called the WIJ. This one is kind of a code for the geographically weighted matrices. And then we can just put the one single line code using the 
Morens test function, and then the argument is uh, just kind of a, this one is our value, and then uh, this is geographically weighted matrices, and then alternative greater means just kind of a, we had to try to do the one side. One side a kind of a a kind of a test to on uh, uh to find out the how significant that Moran's test value will be. Okay. So when you try to uh run the this uh Moran's test, you can see the this kind of a summary table, uh, not summary, uh maybe summary output. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you can you can see that Moran's I statistic is point or uh point six two six six kind of thing, which is the quite positive one, and then the variance is the very very low, and then when we also have a Moran's I statistic standardized value like a t statistic test, we can actually have a p value for the very very low. That means our Moran test score is a statistically highly significant. So that means our our uh value of the clustering value of the Moran's index is a very, very, very significant, statistically significant, which is the very valid value. Okay. And then uh and then also you can uh you can also try to uh, try to do the some of the part. Of, you can also extract the, some part of the only part of the value extraction from the that summary table, like like a, this kind of command. Just kind of a ex value of the estimate under the Dan Boren's index, and then you can see the only value gonna be extracted like this value. And also statistic when you try to loading the only thinking about the statistic value in it, like a Z score, maybe you can on you can find out that this kind of deviation value in here. And then a P value means that you can also know the P value only expect the P value only. Okay. And then and then also another thing we can do is the one is the uh uh, in here actually says about the same conclusion going to be obtained. We can use the Monte Carlo approaches to the assess to the significant. So that means it's a more like a, a iterative kind of process to get to the converging values, kind of things. And then uh, we can also use the uh other than the Moran's test, we can also use the Moran's MC like a, a Monte Carlo approaches to get to the more converging significant value. Okay, and then it is also give give us to the quite quite similar value like a point six three, and then p value is the very very highly significant, and then when we draw the this kind of line, we can see that there is a red line. This is the what where the our Morans index gonna be here. Okay, so that means compared to the this when we have a this kind of histogram, we can say that our our special pattern is a highly, highly clustering, represent uh, shows the highly clustering pattern in here. This one is actually here, 0.63 in this case. Okay. And then also we can, uh, actually in, in here, it yeah, we can also try to visualize in those kind of lizard as a scatter plot. And then when you're looking at the, this kind of a, uh, little dots, that means that actually represents about the uh, uh, index uh, uh, index score, relatively index score kind of thing. And then Moran's index actually has the value for the this kind of a slope. Okay. This slope is actually 0.63. That's the meaning of the this scatter plot, and then uh, that based on the that slope, we can actually draw the this kind of a trendy line to represent to the degree of the clustering. Okay. Do we have any questions so far?
Anything? Um, so I have one question actually for the previous part for the uh, modern test. So uh, the alternative, yeah, because for the, um, yeah. So um, I'm not entirely clear on why we are using a one sided test here. Like, um, ah, one sided yeah. test here. Mm. Yes. Uh, actually, actually, in here, maybe usually, because that is also kind of a wondering, because usually we do not have a, this kind of alternative. Actually, uh, in here, what the, the reason why we actually have a greater is we want to know about the how value is the clustering together, right? So that means maybe if we have a 10 or 8 in this case, in this area, greater means is a kind of a, the bell, maybe uh, not not the, these kind of two things, okay. So in the global, uh, global Morans index actually have a, a producing the index score, uh, through the comparison with the uh, with the uh, uh value of the rest of the area, right? So that means when we try to do the greater means one side one side the test means is does the value in that specific area has the larger value than the average rest of average uh of the rest of the uh, value in the rest of the area or less value compared to the rest of the, uh, compared of the mean value of the rest of the area. That's the, that's the hypothesis kind of test. Sometimes we can only use the both, which means we just only think about the, do they have the, do they have the uh, similar value or not, okay? But in this case, the greater means is we also want to know about the, that value is the larger than the uh, mean value of the rest of the area or less than value of the rest of the area. So that's the test, what that's the, this test is about. But some, but also frequently also we can use about the option both, which is we only want to know about the, between the, between the mean value of the rest of, uh, of, of the older area area and uh, that 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 value the value of the, the that specific area i in this case do they have the pretty similar or the same or not that that is also kind of a question we can do but normally it isn't uh uh that is also another test we can do okay but in this case Greater means is just kind of a try to one side by using the one sided test. It. We can also want to know about the is that the larger larger value that specific area I has the larger value compared to the uh compared to the mean value of the whole area or or a smaller value compared to the mean value of the rest of the area. Okay, that's the kind of a hypothesis test in this case. Okay, does that answer your question? Yeah, I'm just a bit uh, surprised actually that the um, this one-sided or greater alternative hypothesis is the default because, mm -hmm. well, um, I think in, in my Usual in my routine practice, I usually just the default is usually two sided uh, tests and one sided hypothesis testing usually reserved for pre registered analysis. So if you have decided in advance, but I guess for um, spatial statistics, one would be much more interested in find in knowing whether a certain measurement is really clustering together so, or this positive or variables with the positive uh, modern syntax. So I think it's just, well, different field. 
So I'm uh, getting used to it. But thank you for your uh, explanation. Yeah, because yeah, in here, it, as you can see here, there is a, in this case, like in here, there is a special oral correlation going to be existed or no special correlation existed. This one is a hypothesis. Sometimes we can also use the both to testing the either way, like a, a, like a negative or correlated or positive or correlated kind of things. And then and then we can also say that in the greater means is the that that uh index score or that value is uh, just kind of a larger value has a uh, has the uh, compared to the mean of the value or smaller value of the mean of the value. So that's the kind of thing I think. That's the what I what I, yeah, in here at the top, like uh, these are the basic hypotheses, like uh, like uh, oh, uh, I think that. Okay, I think that I can explain the long way because uh, when I say about the larger value and small value, this one is actually, actually applied to the what is called the Gettys art. Sorry about that. Gettys art geostatistic test. Because in these cases, we also thinking about the weighted, we also thinking about the the magnitude of the value. So I actually explained the that test in here. Okay, sorry about that. Because uh, in here, in the Morenz index test, it is actually about the one-sided test. It means is the we when we also looking at the that value, like uh, that value, uh, the positive. When we have a when we have a index i value is the mean value of the i, that means the more like a positive value. So that means actually larger value here, right? So when we try to e i means the expected value, like a mean value of the Morenz index for the older area, and then i means the that in Morenz index for the that specific area, and then uh, comparing both two, and then we can try to think about the does that the has the larger Morenz index value or smaller index value, which represents of the degree of the old correlation compared to the that area to the older area as a whole. Okay, that's the one sided test, and the both test means it's a just kind of a testing of the, is that a correlated or not, okay? This one side test is if they are specially correlated, does that does that index value is the positive, um, larger than the mean value or mean index value or smaller than the mean index value, which means the, which means the try to thinking about the direction of the special correlation, like a positive correlate or correlation or negative or correlation. Okay. And then there is also another concept because other than the local Morenz index, which is the LISA, L-I-S-A. Uh, this one is actually developed by the professors, professors named Luke, An uh, Luke Anselin. Yeah, here. He is he is the one of the top experts about the special statistics. He's now retired, but the thing is uh I personally met him in the conference and then during the some of the seminar and then he is actually kind of a father, one of the one of the first generation who uh, uh who actually developed this kind of area, okay? So he actually do the uh uh develop the concept called the local Morenz index. Because in the previous sections, we actually <clears throat> uh we actually thinking about the how one specific area has the ha value is the similar or clustering across the spaces compared to the older area, right? But, but Morenz index is just only looking at the, their neighbors, okay? When we're looking at the, that each area value and then nearby area, how those values are the cluster together. 
that's the that's the concept of the local Morin's index. Okay. Does that uh does that understand what you mean? And then a G is the kind of a uh uh kind of a formula that we can use. Actually, denominator is the is the quite same, but the thing is we don't have any weighted matrices in here. Mate, weighted uh, weighted geographical weighted matrix only apply to the this uh this residual calculation, some of the residual calculations. Okay. And then uh, this y bar is uh, kind of like a, what is called the uh, Mm, I think that this one is uh, just kind of predicted, predicted expected value, I guess. And then by using the this formula, we only try to looking at the looking at the there is an area, and then uh and then you know, we have uh, all different kind of uh, neighbors nearby like this. This is the area we wanna we wanna look at in the middle. And then uh, there is a nearby area like a neighbors. We only looking at the these values, and then try to calculate the i value, which means how com uh how those how values of the neighbor and then uh, the value is the area i is the uh correlated together across the spaces across the space. That's the what local Morin's index does, and then, uh, it is also a very simple function in R. The only thing we can do is the just kind of use the function called the Morin's index, local Morin function, and then decide our value we want to test for the special correlation. We also creating the same geographically weighted matrices. And then the alternative is a greater means does that have a positive special correlation or a negative special correlation when we only looking at the neighbors of the that specific areas. Okay. And then we can actually see the sum of the this kind of a table, which is II means the local morons I statistic over each area. And then EI is the expectation, which is the EI, expected value, okay? Variance is uh, just kind of a variance is the local area between the that area to the its neighbor. And then the Z value is uh, just kind of a Z score, okay? Z score is the variance I square divided by I minus E I. This one is a Z score. And then uh, each G score can be calculated about the about the P value, like how how significant we are. The reason why we have uh, this kind of a table is the local Morans index actually uh calculating the I indexes for the each area and neighborhood area. So that means we have a uh, Morans index as a uh, all the each area to to represent the special oral correlation uh value between the that area to the its that that area and its neighbors. That's the reason why we have a uh, all different kind of a Morans index other than the global index. Global index is uh, just kind of a degree of the uh degree of the uh a uh, special oral correlation between the one one single area to the all the area, so that means we can only get the one standardized single index score, right? Right in as a global outcome, but this one is uh, just kind of a local Morin's index, and then uh, that is the reason why we have a Morin's index value for the each specific area to represent uh, that special oral correlation. Uh, ex uh, degree of the death special oral correlation between the dead area and neighbors. Okay. And then we can also draw by using the this kind of a T map value. 
and then we can actually extract the this Morens index and G score, and then a p value as a value, and then by using the this kind of a t map, we can actually uh put uh produce the this kind of a interactive mapping like a like a p value means how those index value is the significant in that area. And then a G score is the standardized value of the that outcome. And then uh at the top in this one is the low Morens, local Morens I value. And then uh the other one, this one is what is that? That one is uh local Morens index, and then uh, this one is actually low value of the clustering, and then uh, this one is the uh, Morens index value to represent the special correlation and then the g score is kind of a variance i square and then that specific area more than index negative and extent value of the i is more like a standardized the relative value of the i and then we can also calculating about the how those g value is the significant statistic is significant to one another in the area. Okay. And then and then also we can also calculating about the uh, alternative is the two-sided instead of the alternative the greater. That means we only testing about the no special correlation or special correlation existing. Okay. That's the kind of a testing we can do. And then and then we can actually think about the visualizing those kind of a result about the uh what is the what is the red one uh red one? This red one actually talking about the negative special or or area for the negatively special oral correlation coefficient. Okay. And then the white one is the there is a no, no special oral correlation nearby uh, between the dead area and then a nearby its neighbors. And then uh, this blue one is the positive one. So that means this blue area actually is surrounded by the neighbor with a similar value. Okay. Does that understand what this means? So this one is actually kind of a mapping of the just kind of a both sides, like a two-sided test to testing, just only testing about the do they have a special oral correlation or not. Okay. I think um, Wait, in the book yeah. it's the other way around, no? Yes, yes. Oh really? Oh uh, yeah, so red is positive okay, and blue is negative. Uh, uh, yeah, you can see it in the code. Ah. The blue, white, red is the same order oh. as um negative, no, and yeah. positive. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. Sorry about that. So, uh, at the top. Ah. Ah, uh, okay. Got you. So, so this one is a. Uh, Okay, let me explain again. So this one is uh, just kind of a uh, up. Yeah, I just uh, tried to. I just explained the opposite way. So it is the greater value, and then and then we just only thinking about the how those area has the surrounding by the similar value, or the opposite value like a like a different values. So uh, so when the red one represents is the negative special oral correlation means. That area actually surrounding that the that ba the value of the that area and then value of the its neighbor has the different very different, and then a positive means that they are similar. Does that does that that's the how map this one is about, right? Yeah, that is the explanation of what negative and positive correlation is, but it's just okay. that the red ones or the positive ones, and it's the blue one that is negative. Ah, oh, oh, okay. That's that's I, just okay. I just uh, try to do the upside down. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so red one, red one is the positive, exactly. and blue one is the negative. Okay. Sorry yes. about that. 
That's it. So blue one actually is surrounded by the opposite value. Red one is the surrounded by the similar value. So that means this area has the has the has the similar housing prices, median housing prices. But in the that blue, that blue one is the kind of a quite unique area compared to the its neighbors, right? Maybe maybe we can have a kind of a uh these housing prices in the blue area is uh, negative means the very different from the this neighbor. Okay, that's the how this one is about, right? Okay, sorry about that, and then. Also, when we think about the what is called the clustering, that means we can also think about the there is a, some four possible, uh, three possible way we can do, maybe four possible way, right? One is a uh, high high value, so that means the area of the high value with the neighbor with the high value. High low is the what this blue one is about, right? Area is the high value or low value or or neighbor is the is the low value. And then area has the area and neighbor has the both low value. And area has the low value, and then the neighbor is the high value. Okay. So that's the four four cases we can thinking about. And then in that cases, we can actually try to do the p value for the alternative hypothesis for the two sided to detect the cluster to use the Morans index. And then we can have uh, this kind of table, right? And then we can also make a plot for the dead local Morans index scatter plot. And then this. Uh, I think that these are the kind of a mean of the slope for the dead Morans index, I guess. I'm not sure about the, in case of the local Morans index, what the slope is about. I think that this one is also kind of a one single value for the mean of the dead local Morans index, I think the EI. So that's the thing. And then, and then we can also, <clears throat> Have a have a find out the, those kind of a clustering types, identifying the clustering type by using the uh this map quadrant function like a like a this one. So in here, this area actually have a when we have a, this kind of a zero value. This all of the this one is the kind of a positive, right? That means high high kind of value, right? And then uh, in the in the opposite way, I think that this one is kind of a low, low value, right? And then in here, this one is kind of, okay, compared to the this median housing prices of the that specific area, and then uh, this one is a lag factor. So that means this one is the low, and high value. So that means area has the low value, like a negative value in here. And then high value is the its neighbor is high. And then in this part is opposite, like a high and low. So that means this uh median uh median housing prices tends to be have a higher value compared to the its neighbor. I think, yeah. And then based on that, we can actually extract the categorizing those kind of uh, value, like a low, low. And then the second quadrant is the high, low. And then the third one, third one is the low, high, non-significant. Okay, low, high, and then the non-significant. We can actually try to categorizing those things based on the their value and then the p-values, and then testing the p-values. And then uh, in up here, like uh, these are, 
And then we can actually try to do the mapping with the, those label in here. And then let me to make sure, let me check the, those things. Okay, so in this map shows that the, this red one actually has the high, high value. So that means in this area, and then when we look at the, these neighbors, in terms of the median how uh median uh median housing prices that area also has the very high housing prices and then its neighbor also has the high housing prices does that understand what you say uh does that make sense to the result yes okay and then the blue one is the low low okay that means as you can see in here in this area and then when we look at the neighbor area this area has the low how uh, low housing prices and also their neighbor also has the low medium prices so that means this downtown boston has a kind of a very poor housing housing prices, that means that there is a actually kind of a very low income neighborhood, okay? With a, with a low price. And then these are the kind of a neighborhood is a more like a very declined or deteriorated uh, neighborhood, okay? And then uh, the white one is the non-significant. That means we cannot exactly define the the value is the kind of a similar uh, high high or low or low low or low high kind of things and then the the pale blue like uh, this one is what is called the low high okay that means that area has the kind of a very low housing prices but the thing is its neighbor is a very expensive housing prices it's a quite uh, quite unique, quite, quite odd, that kind of a neighborhood. But anyway, that's the kind of a result we can have. And then, uh, as far as I saw here, there is a kind of a low, 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 high, high, low kind of a neighborhood, right? When you're looking at the, this map, maybe you can zoom in to the each area, uh, each area, maybe looking through the, those area, you will find that the, there is a low, high, low kind of uh, area. Actually, this means that uh, that area by itself has the high housing prices, but surrounded by the low prices uh, area with the low housing prices. Actually, that means that there is a no case for that. Okay. That's the kind of uh, things. And then uh, this one is the end of the chapter eight. And then uh, do you have uh, any questions?